we have an iPhone 10R here with no display. Uh, I stuck it. The screen was completely shattered, so I didn't even put my screen on there. But I just I normally just plug it into the USB ammeter to see if it's um, pulling the correct uh, amperage, and it, which it looks like it it is. Um, I'm getting about 0.9 amps on the USB ammeter, so it tells me that it's, it's charging normally. Um, so no display. So first thing I always go to is basically just go straight to the display connector here, which is actually which is this one right here. So this is the display right here. You can see there's four data filters, and um, if you click on these individually, you'll see that these are most of the display lines here, and then the backlight lines are on this side. It looks like there's just let's see. Yeah, it looks like there's two separate backlight systems for the um, for the 10R. And this side is probably digitizer, okay? So we won't worry about that for now. We just want to get the display working and let's see, what's, see what else is going on from there. So I've already done some preliminary work already and I've determined that this line right here is shorted. So basically just diode mode this line. Uh, red to ground, black to this point right here in diode mode on your multimeter. I was getting zero, which means that, it, that this line is shorted. So so if you look at this right here, there's a cap here, and then on the back side of the logic board here, it leads to another capacitor and a filter. Filter leads to several of the capacitors, which probably also leads to the display IC. The good thing about display problem, no display problems, is that all these phones, all of them, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the 10 series, but most of these problems has actually probably every phone with the LCD screen uses the same display IC, which is which we call chestnut. Um, so basically, all of the display systems have have been the same since I guess the five, maybe yeah, probably the five. So which makes it a little bit easier to to troubleshoot. Okay, so looking at the um, Looking under a microscope, here's my display connector here, and this is so there's a right one and a left one. These two these two connectors are in the middle of the logic board, and I started testing this one and I tested this one. This one this one gave me zero, so that's that's where I've uh, ended uh, my troubleshooting. I did check the backlight um, anode line as well, and that's fine. So it sounds like it's probably just this connector this pin right here that's messed up and I don't see anything I mean, it's possible that this capacitor right here is messed up but I think it's probably doubtful so I'm just gonna go straight to the back of the logic board here and there's this big rubber thing on the back of it which you got to take off um, so the back of the back of the logic board let's see down towards the end here there's two big capacitors and a filter it looks like yeah, so it's going to be so it's going to be these two right here and this. So I mean, there's really no way to determine what's which one is blown just by kind of. Sometimes you can, but uh, a lot of times you can't. So you can do one of two things. You can you can just start popping things out and. Uh, Let's see what I want to do here. I don't think I've ever done one of these yet. Um, so let's see. Uh, I think what's the easiest thing to do? The easiest thing to do is maybe heat it. So that's kind of what I'll do. And I'm going to be a little careful here because these these things are a little bit finicky and these uh, XORs, uh, some of these components are underfilled and stuff like that. So I want to make sure I don't overheat anything. But I'm just going to I'm going to heat this up a little bit and. I, I think it's probably going to be one of these two. I'm hoping it's going to be one of these two capacitors here. And I guess I could take this filter off, but I'm just going to take these two off since these are kind of like located in pretty good uh, areas for me to remove and replace. So basically, just take your pick, whichever one you think it is. Sometimes you'll see a crack and stuff like that. That makes it a little bit easier. But 
A lot of times it'll, it'll just be exactly like this. You won't know what's what. Which one's good, which one's bad. And you basically just have to start taking them out until you find it. You could also just use your hot tweezers and just kind of clamp it down and grab it. Sometimes I just kind of pop them off. Which may be what I'll do here actually. Because using quite a bit of heat. So let's just do this. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure, which is not going to hurt anything. Take one off, test it. Take, and then if that's not it, we'll take the other one off and test it. So it's not that one, because it's still shorted. Ugh. Things, it's not very easy to take off, that's for sure. Huh. There it goes. Okay. Probably not this one either, but I've been wrong before. Let's see. Nope, still not that one. Okay, so I guess maybe we'll just take this filter off too, just just to make sure that the front it's not the front side one. If it is the front side one, we would have just wasted a lot of time, but. It's usually not a smaller one, it's usually the bigger one. So. Oh shit, it is the front side one, damn it. Damn it. Alright, so we just wasted a lot of time. So basically. So basically I took this filter off, okay, which basically tells me which side of the short is on, okay. And I just measured these two, one of these two passers here, and, and uh, it was giving me 0.56, which is correct. So it tells me that the problem is on this side right here, which, oh, actually it could be that one too. So it's either going to be that one or it's going to be the front side one right next to the connector. Okay, so it's probably, so let's take this one off as well and then... And if that one's it, then it would have been worth it to remove it. Otherwise, we would not have had to remove it. Probably this one, yeah. Yeah, it's probably this one. This one doesn't look too good. Well, it doesn't look cracked. Yeah, this is probably this one. I'm just going to say it is. You know what? Let's just pop it off. Sometimes I just take my X-Acto knife and just kind of pop it off just like that so that's kind of loose now and let's test it again and there's no more short so no more short so let's just go ahead and test this just to confirm and that is indeed shorted so so that one's bad. Let's just throw that one away, and then we have to put these other ones back, uh, especially the filter. So you need some. This is where you need some good tools because it's kind of a pain in the arse to do this without good tools. This is where it gets a little frustrating. Maybe sometimes. So you don't want to put too much um, solder on there, otherwise it's going to be like, it's going to bridge. And it's really hard to get the, the ground side uh, tinned. But if I use a big one, it usually works a little better. And... Let's see, let's see if I can tin this filter. This one tin. Okay, there we go. It's perfect. So now I'll just use my uh, tweezers to put these back on and hopefully it won't be too hard. 
It got hurt, not hurt at all. I'm pretty sure they're the same value, but we're just going to do this anyways. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're the same value. Okay. See, this is where the good tools helps a ton. Okay. All right, looks good. Uh, let's just give it a little bit of a nudge over there tweezers just to make sure that they're pretty solid and then what we're going to do is diode mode it uh... hold up, did I put these the wrong way? damn it! <laughs> that's terrible that's terrible these are these are the wrong way, damn it it's supposed to be like this All right, uh, and then one more. You definitely want to get a nice little joint. Like that's not a good joint right there, and it might take a little bit of extra heat. So let's just do this. There you go. The bigger the iron, the better uh, soldering you get. Okay. Still not a great joint, but we'll see how it goes. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's put a little bit of solder on my tweezers here, and then see if we can go down there. There we go. No. Okay. Uh. There, that's good enough. I'll just heat it just a little bit, just to. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Alright, that's good. Q tip. Clean enough, um, diode mode it. So you can just diode mode just this filter here if you want. What the? Okay, that's good. Alright, we're good. 0.6 to 0. So this should be back in business. Let me reassemble it and I'll show you guys. XR is kind of shitty to put back together because this little rubber thing is kind of... Anyways, there's so many damn cables, and I always, like, have one that's in, down below. Or maybe this rubber thing, like, sticks out or something like that, you know? It's always something. So it's a little bit annoying. So I feel like some, something's already like kind of stuck down there. It's probably this damn rubber. Okay, so maybe that's okay. I don't know. I hope. Let's look. All right, that's good.
So I think his screen is must be bad, so I'm just going to try my screen here and see how it works. Ugh, I need some more coffee. Uh, today is one of those days. Okay, so let's see. Let me just bust the screen out here. There it goes. The display works again. I'm not going to wait for it to charge up because, uh, anyways, we should be back in business. I mean, if it's not, then I'll call back and finish this video, but it, it's good. Uh, so, anyways, that's the end of this iPhone XR no display repair. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos on YouTube. Um, you know, when I started micro soldering about three or four years ago, probably about three years ago, um, I started because I ended up breaking someone's phone during a repair. Yeah, this was back in the days of the iPhone 5C, and as I was disconnecting the battery, I accidentally pried off one of the little components next to the battery connector. So my options were to try to try to fix it or to buy buy the customer a new phone, and and that's kind of what started this journey. Well, fast forward three years later, um, we have a website now, microsoldering.com, and we also have an online training course. Um, it's $99.99 if you buy it through our website, and we go over just about everything that you need to know to get started on your microsoldering journey. Um, it's uh, kind of sectioned out into about four parts. And uh, the first part, we just kind of go over all the basics and tools, how to use diode mode, um, and uh, what kind of tools and equipment to buy and stuff like that. The second part, we talk a little bit about ZXW tools. And in the third part, we go over four of the most common repairs. Let's update this. It should be four common repairs. So it's basically no touch, no backlight, no power. And we just added a section for audio IC on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. And then the last part is data recovery, no boot, and just kind of a very basic um, uh, discussion about data recovery. So if you want to buy it, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, shop, and then you'll come to this um, this uh, page right here. Just click on buy at Udemy, and that'll take you to Udemy where our course is hosted. Um, and you can even preview some videos of the course and see if you like it or not. And right now it's we're at four and a half hours and we're adding to it um, as much as we can. So uh, just make sure you go through our website. Otherwise, the cost is a little bit higher. All right. Thanks for watching.